What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we are at Tarpon Tom's E-Bikes in Palm Harbor with the AMA Santa Monica. You know what it is. We are going to add a second 48 volt battery to the Santa Monica and we will demonstrate the use of the Universal Kit plus the DX2 from Datex installation with an extra output for your accessory needs or if one day in the future you decide to add a front hub motor to this bike. This is a 750 watt rear hub with 27.5 wheels. Those tires are nice and fat at 2.6 inches. It has a 48 volt 15 amp hour battery and we're going to add another 10 or 14 amp hours to this setup. Remember, you are not isolated to the amp hour battery that we choose. Just make sure that you match the system voltage 48 and that you have the connections necessary, which are XT60, to plug into your balancer or battery combiner. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. And if you're in Palm Harbor and you need work done on any of your PEVs, come to Tarpon Tom's eBikes. Brad will take care of you. Here we go. I need to get this battery out of here. We've already pre-tested this, but uh, I wanted to show you what we have and what we'll link for the Santa Monica in the description. We have the 40 amp universal kit, which we have tested, does work, we'll show the install. And then we have the Date X2. This has a dual output, so if you're looking for accessory power off of your battery, we will in the future offer an accessory option for this, and you can also fashion up one of your own. The efficiency on this is really great, and then we will be loading it with the phone bag from Bike Case, and this is where we'll put our Kit. We'll put our balancer inside the bag and then wrap it to the seat post so that it is protected. And then we have some of these tidy helper cable clips that we'll attach to the body just to hold the battery uh, power connection. And then we have the battery with the bike case bottle cage straps that will go around the body and hold this battery to the bike without having to screw into the body itself. So the very first thing I want to do is get the motor cable loose this will help with feeding the cable through the grommet up here uh, through the bottom of the body of the bike there we go inside is a unibody piece you have the battery pins which are here and then this metal plate that runs down the bike body and then connects to the bike lock is one piece so when you move it you got to make sure and get the keyhole pushed through and then we'll orient this thing we'll push it into the head of the bike and then that will allow us to pull this end out we'll remove the connections and then we should be good to go there are four phillips head screws that are in there so make sure you get those removed do not strip them they're in there pretty tight so just take your time and be patient All right, so now I'm just going to push in the key and then push this whole piece. Now I'm going to work this out. There are two connectors here, one signal for the battery, the other is XT60, and you're going to unplug those. And when you take this out, you can see that it is just one big piece. And here is your key lock for your battery. And then on the end of it, two connectors. This is what we're interested in. Now we need to get this grommet out of the hole so we can create enough room to put our, ca our cables into it. From there, we're going to take our two extension cables from the balancer kit, 
we're going to take a male and a female end and put them through the hole here. And I'm just going to make sure that I have control of them out of the body. So here are our two cable ends, and then these are our two ends for the battery plate. So we're going to take this male XT60 and plug it into this one that is in the bike. And then I'm going to pull that slack out and then get that wire tucked away. There we go. Now we have these two which will connect to the plate. I'm going to take my plate and slide it down in the body. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my connection for the XT60. And then I'm not going to forget my signal wire. And then I'm going to take the slack out of that too. I'm making sure that they're both tucked behind the plate when I get it in there. Down here, don't forget that your keyhole is there and that your plate needs to align with that. There it is. Now the screws need to be returned into the plate. These have been returned. Get my motor cable hooked up again. Go ahead and get a couple zip ties back in this thing. And then I'm just going to close loop this so when I take this bike off the rack, I can check to see that it's working. So I've connected the cables that we just installed. I've got the battery in the bike. Let's see if it comes alive. There we go. That's what we're after. No errors. That's what we want to see. Okay. Now we have our Datex DX2, and we are just going to go ahead and plug this in. You can't mess up this connection, so just go ahead and plug in what works. go and with that we are going to test that the factory battery is still working and we can see that the display fires up and we know that the display has power so it's working now we're going to add the second battery the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery in a bag and we're just going to go ahead and plug this into the datex dx2 can't really mess it up. Just go ahead and plug it into the last slot for the bat or the DX2 itself. And then we can see that the display is still on from previous. And what I'll do while you watch the display is go ahead and remove the main battery. And you'll see that the display stays on. And that is because the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery is still plugged in. Now that we know that the DX2 works, we're going to go ahead and power this down from the 48 volt 10 amp hour extra battery, unplug the DX2, and then we're just going to plug in our 40 amp dual battery discharge balancer kit that we normally sell and started with, 
and then demonstrate that it works. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. You can't really mess this up, so just plug in the cables that work, and then the last one standing will be your extra battery. We already know that the main battery is out of the bike, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery and go ahead and try about and power it up. Perfect, we can see that the display lights up, so we know that that's working. And the next will be to test the main battery. So we'll go ahead and get that in the frame and then disconnect the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery. And we'll do that without cutting it off so that you can see it's getting continuous power. So while the display is on, I'm just gonna go, at, go ahead and remove the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery just by unplugging it. And you can see that the display remained on, so we have a good connection and good function there with the balancer. We wanted to change the way that we're mounting our balancer, and there is no room to put this inside with the controller, so we want to use some of this space that's available between the seat post and the fender. For that, we're going to use the bike case phone bag, and we think that these straps will work really well, and then we'll add an extra layer of protection and actually give you some place to stow your stuff if you'd like. It's got a couple of zippers, and we'll just turn it upside down and then put the balancer inside and use the straps to wrap around the seat post area, and then that'll give it a nice clean look. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my balancer and then take my cables and run them up through the bottom hole right here between the seat post and the fenders. And then I'm gonna plug my balancer back into those cables. I just wanna make sure that they're seated nice and I'll probably have to wrap them up again with some zip ties. I'm gonna plug in the balancer. Again, you can't really mess this up. Just plug it in the way it works. And then that last lead will be for the extra battery. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this packaging and then put the balancer in there and then zip it up and strap it to the seat post. Keep in mind that the orientation of the bag is actually upside down, but I do that so that the zippers will come together at the bottom of the bag. I'm gonna use these Velcro straps to help fasten it to the seat post. And then normally I would get as much of the Velcro onto the strap as possible by moving it around and then roll these up. I don't wanna cut them because I may use this bag another time. Now I'm gonna take the battery that I intend to mount on the bike, and this is a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery high chung with the bike case bottle cage strap adapters. There are two of them. The top part in the mount has two screws and the other bottle cage strap in the bottom has one. These two screws have to be, have to have a head that's small enough where you can slide the battery over it. Once you have that, you have the no grip surface of the bottle cage strap and then the no slip straps themselves. And these are the long versions that actually will wrap around the body of the bike with the no slip hitting on the flat surface. It seems to hold up well to the weight and when I snap this in, it becomes one piece and then I can just strap the battery to the bike itself and it makes it really convenient. I do like having these and you can use generally any down tube battery you want to install just like so. Once you get your battery position, just make sure to come back and pull the, tra the straps tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my XT60N for this battery. And we now have a successful dual battery connection for the Santa Monica. I'm gonna go ahead and tie the rest of these wires up with a zip tie and clean it up. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a second 48 volt battery on this AMA Santa Monica. It comes with a factory 15 amp hour battery. That's 48 volt, 15 amp hour. And you saw us demonstrate with a 10 amp hour battery but attached to it, we have a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. Remember, you are not isolated to this amp hour battery. You can get any 48 volt battery that you want. Just make sure it works with the voltage output. So the BMX works with the controller output for the 750. That is likely not more than 30 amps. So don't worry about that. I know a lot of you are here for the range calculations, So let's get to it. So the original battery is 15 amp hours plus 14 amp hours of the second battery is 29 amp hours times 48 
equals 1,392 1, watt hours. We're going to take that and divide it by 25. And 25 is the mica toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles per hour throttle only. So you have 1,392 divided by 25, and you get 55.68 miles for this dual battery Santa Monica. This is at 20 miles an hour throttle only. Keep in mind that we use the bike cage bag to hold the balancer and combiners. So keep that in mind when you're going for your install. And we also use, we also use these cable strap clips and we will stick them to the body of the bike and it will help hold down those cables if you just need a little more aesthetically pleasing install. Otherwise, we've utilized zip ties. I know a lot of you don't like doing that, but uh, around the e-bike kingdom, zip ties rule the world. So keep that in mind. The bike case bottle cage strap adapters are crucial for an installation like this, but we will also leave a down tube battery adapter that will allow the mounting place to be shifted up and down the down tube of the body. And then we will leave a link for the phone bag as well. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. And again, if you need any work on your PEVs, electric bikes, one wheels, any of your scooters, come check out Tarp and Tom's eBikes in Palm Harbor. Brad and mostly Wes will take care of you. We'll talk time. Talk to you next time.